So I've got our special guest just going to join us now. I'm going to bring him on screen. And, uh, yeah, he's just come out of the green. You see on the screen there the uh, mothership. That's where he's been. We've spent, spared no expense today. And we gave him special... Uh, sp- <laughs> Special space food, dried food we gave him. So he thought what it was uh, Benji's built on. Don't tell him, he'll never know. It's lovely, it's delicious stuff. <laughs> anyway, my friend, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear, yeah. loud and clear. Clem Fandango, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I've got you, I've got you. <laughs> yeah, sound man. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, no, it's all right. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, because you've got, you've got a real interesting, and I'll let you introduce yourself in a second. Um, you've got a really interesting range of music, haven't you? Uh, you know, some of it's quite experimental. Quite, you know, it's, it's it's good stuff. We're liking it. We're liking it. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that there's so many bands out there that um, sound exactly like Oasis, like they're a rip off of, um, you know, the nineties, which yeah. is, you know, it's absolutely fine. And I sort of verge a little bit on. That I guess some people say I sound like the super furry animals, but um, I, I deliberately released a, sort of like an ambient album, um, more as an experiment. But I shoved it up there because I don't want to be labelled as someone who just does one pocket of music. I'd prefer to just get my you know cards on the table that with me. Yeah. When I get a new when I get a new computer, I'll be releasing pretty. I could be releasing anything. So I want freedom. I don't I want. Um, I don't want to be put in a little box and then annoy people when I release a country and western album. I'll, God, I'll, for, God forbid. I like that. Anyway, we've not even introduced introduce yourself for everyone out there so they know who you are. Uh, my, my name's uh, John, uh, John Mickey. I've got a funny surname from um, from Aberdeen. I've got to blame my dad for that. Um, um, I live in Morpeth. I make uh, but basically psychedelic music and um, it's just me. It's literally just me. I do I do everything myself. So um, yeah, that's that's sort of like the the A to Z of me in a nutshell. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> and I like what you said there about not being pigeonholed because um, we're called Dougie Stone Radio. I uh, before that uh, my stuff was Dougie Stone, and uh, when when I was launching my business, my wife went, "It doesn't say what you do." I went, "Exactly." She went. Yeah, but shouldn't you be saying what you do? Because at the time, I was doing business consulting as well. I said, yeah, but what, I want to pitch myself for. What happens if I want to do something else? Like, you know, or, and she went, yeah, it doesn't make, doesn't make sense. I went, well, all right, then, Moon Pig. So what about them? Uh, do you know what I mean? Virgin. What, <laughs> do you know what I mean? What about them? I said, we can take it to the other extreme, car phone warehouse. It was a car phone now. Do you know what I mean? So it, yeah. I think sometimes people, they want to pigeonhole themselves into something. And I, I think it is good in some respects to niche down if that's what you want to do. You know, if you want to bring out an indie, uh, indie sound, then, yeah, do that. You know, be an indie band. But um, if you're a creative and you want to go all over the place, then, yeah, it makes sense, man. It makes sense. Well, it's, it's, you know, like I've, I've got a... The only person I've got a picture of on the wall is uh, Noel and Liam Gallagher. I... I I'm not a massive fan of Liam Gallagher. I don't get why everyone's um yeah, I don't get what the love in about Liam is. He can't sing anymore. And I don't I'll probably get shouted down by people <laughs> on the internet. Noel Gallagher is the man who I think is, you know, the brains. I think he's great. But yeah. Yeah. um my you know, I've got broader musical taste than that, like Brian Eno, um, you know, all sorts, BB King, you know, so um yeah, well, just to, I, just just to be associated with one hero. I've I've got a paint that <clears throat> painting on the wall. It's a print of a painting. It's in I think it's in New York. Uh, a friend of mine's an, a, an artist. And that's Liam and Noel. And you're right. I think what it is with with um, I think what it is with Liam is built a brand up on it. So he's built a followers. So you know if he I don't know. If he sang and sang on the toilet, some something whatever, people would still love it. Do you know what I mean? Because the the I think they bought into that brand. Is that big? They've bought into it, haven't they? So does that make sense? He, yeah. Well, he ruined his voice in two thousand and five, and he's sounded so nasally since then. And like he's got so much auto tune going on over his records that, I to me that isn't, you know, yeah. I don't see why people are buying into that. And I've, you know, I'm I'm in, I'm fully in the Noel camp, but I'm fully aware no one else is in that camp. So, oh no, Noel's um, brought, brought some absolutely superb music on. You're right, I think he is. Uh, 
Yeah, he's very quiet in his whereas Liam's in your face, Noel's whatever. But yeah, I get it, I get it. So pulling it back to you, because we don't want to talk about they get enough press, Liam and Noel. Oh, they're getting back <laughs> together. Are you gonna get back together? Why do people ask him them bleeding questions? If I had him on, I'd never ask it. Are you gonna get back yeah, together well, with your brother? I'll, no. I'll just I'll just tell him please don't get back together because it's done, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's done, like, move on. You know, um I don't want to see Paul Weller in the jam. I want I wanna see Paul Weller. I don't you know yeah, Coxton, Coxton or whatever his name is. I'm not I'm not fussed about those other two guys. Well, I preferred him in the jam to <clears> being Paul Weller, to be honest with you. I think I'm a but bit probably a bit straight. I liked early jam raw, the raw. Do you know what I mean? When I, when a band like that starts to come come before they come mainstream, and they they just add that rawness to them. And I think I don't know. I think it lost some up. But anyway, each their own, yeah. isn't it? We, we all well, kind of like the same stuff. Star Council was a bit crap, wasn't it? Sorry, it was. I'm swearing. I'm swearing on air, so and, I don't know what be, I'm allowed to do here. And because you've come on, I've I've got my shirt and tan today. Look. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'll all dressed up, man. All dressed up I've, for a special I've, interview. I've brought the cat. She's asleep on the bed, <laughs> so you know. Excellent. What we're going to do? What we tend to do with this show is we mix it up and play some of the music or videos if you've got videos. So um, we'll do that when this is on. We'll be off screen, so not a problem there. But I'm going to play this, which is, I think is your biggest track. It's uh, "I'll Write Your Con- Consolation." Constellation, Constellation, yeah. Constellation. I'm a dyslexic yeah. fool as well, so sometimes I read things and go, hang on a minute, is that right? Um, I love this track. This track is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think it's this track we heard, and I went, we've got to speak to him. We've got to speak to him. Let's see if John will chat to us, because this track's awesome, man. It's awesome. Tell us a bit about this. Uh, it was originally about 10 minutes long, and um, it was when I first got the recording program, because I'm not someone who started when I was 18. Um, and I just was mucking about with stuff. And then I sort of like left it on the hard drive. And then as I was sort of like trying to put my album together, I came across it again and I thought there's something here. Um, and I spent ages just trying to, you know, make it sound half mm. decent. And I knew it was going to be the end to the album. It basically, well, it basically is. There's another song after it. Um, but I have got another track on my hard drive, which is like the son of this song, All right. which I need to I need to work on. So um, yeah, please it's, it's, please do it's ba- please do. It's, it's basically one long guitar solo. This song, it's, uh, it's awesome. That's another, that's another thing I like doing is putting guitar solos in the songs because that seems to have died. So I try and try and fit in a guitar solo everywhere I can. Because mm. this this track's had something like two hundred and thirty thousand streams on Spotify. I think this one, I'm sure it has. Sorry. Yeah, which if you if you look at um, the um, if in, in old money in terms of buying records, it's something like I don't know um, twenty records sold, so which is nothing in the, in uh, old money. But oh, um, oh, you mean as in as in cash or in no in physical physical? If you uh, the the website that certifies like gold discs and stuff, yeah, it's about tw- it's about twenty five sales or something silly. So um, what two hundred and fifty sales? What two hundred thirty thousand? Is that what it equates yeah, to? Yeah, no, it's it's like it's uh, every, like it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like for me to get um a gold disc on that song, I'd have to it'd have to be like twenty twenty five million plays. So um, wow, yeah, streaming streaming in uh, new money is meaningless. If you can get on a decent playlist and you know get mm. forty thousand plays, you'll get about five p from Spotify. So you yeah. can go and get your, you can go and get a few sweets. Yeah, but, but um, uh, put them put the money because Spotify and put that money to one side. But however, that's still a lot of streams. That's what I'm trying to get. Two hundred thirty thousand streams is that's a, that's a lot of streams. That's a lot of that's a lot of clicks, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's the one song I pushed because it's probably the most commercial yeah. song of of uh, off my album because um, everything else is a bit all over the place. Um, you know, you know. So um, yeah, whoever, whoever's listening to it and people. People in like when you look on Spotify stats, it's like weird places like Kazakhstan and um, all these tin pot countries that no one ever goes to. So um, we don't mean you in know. Kazakhstan. We love you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to go on holiday there, but um, no. you know, so f- fair play to whoever's listening. Um, it is appreciated. It sort of blows my mind, really. But you know, these streaming platforms get a hard time because they do pay, you know, pretty much nothing. But um, for me. If I was born in the eight, you know, living in the eighties, um, 
it would have been impossible for me to reach these people. So, exactly, um, and that's what, and I think that's what we need. People need to understand. Oh, yeah, we're not making the money. Yeah, but you would never have got to. People would never have known about you. You would never have gone anywhere, do you? You know, I do. I do videos on TikTok for a few hours, or I do whatever, and it might get two or three hundred views, and you think, well. That's and then well, it's not a lot, is it? But that's two hundred views that people have took the time to click and watch it. So you know what I mean, and it just builds up. Right, let's play this track, Q to VT, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Cool. I love this track. She's so Dougie Stone Radio introducing. Take it away, baby. God, <laughs> I absolutely love that track, man. I'll tell you what, that is uh, stunning, stunning. It's just got everything on it. It's going to be a well when I get my new computer, whenever that will be. It's going to be this that album is going to be really hard to try and top. Put it that way. Man. I think I've uh, I think I've uh, I've done the wrong thing where I've released the best thing straight away, and I should have like released something really rubbish first. 
Mate, don't say that you can bet you you might be able to better it, but that trap for me, it just grabbed it just grabs you. It grabs you straight away and it's the B and oh a brilliant bit of uh, bit of violin in there and everything, everything thrown at it. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's just got it's got a great vibe to it. Thank you. Thank you. Well it's uh yeah, well it's you know, it's the one that's getting the most plays. So. Awesome, awesome, mate, awesome. I, 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 also, um, we normally ask a question, but I don't even think we need to ask this question. Uh, which band or artist would you put in Room 101? I think you've already answered that at the start. Uh, <laughs> well, not, no, uh, well that, the reason why I said um, <laughs> Oasis is the band that I grew up with in the 90s, because I was born in 85 from 36, 34 in non-COVID years, because um, we all had two years robbed. But if I was going to put a artist in the um, who I'd hang around with, it would be Grimes, Claire Boucher from um, Canada. Dated Elon Musk, has a kid with him, but she's my she's my hero. Right. Um, and I there's lots of mixing stuff that I nick from her songs because I just think they're incredible. They're incredible soundscapes. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd probably she's the one. She's the one. Well, she's got. Uh, I got a soft spot for her. What you need to do is see if she's up for a collab. Do you know what I mean? Come on, baby, let's do a collaboration. Love you. Yeah, here's, here's my she's, track. Check this out. She's 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 uh yeah. Well, she she was she's had a kid with the richest man on the planet. You might be an idiot, but um, you know she could she can collab with anyone. I think I'm a bit bit below her now. So hey mate, hey my doesn't matter. Just hey my just go away. <laughs> Anyway, that's another, that. let's try that. And Eddie normally asks a question. He asks every band, so we've got to ask the question. If you've got a tour van, what kind of tour van have you got? But I doubt you've got a tour van because you're doing it on your own. Your own yeah, I don't, I don't tour. I'm one of these people that physically refuses to tour because I'm happy with my life. Um, I've <laughs> I'm, had, the I've got my I'm the I've got same. My I've got my two cats here. I was talking to um, Orange G on uh, Twitter like this morning and Chris. And he's got an album out, and he spent ages doing it, like ages, like a year. And um, he's still not there with – he's still got issues with it, mixing it. And I, I said to him, imagine when you've finally done it, you've then got to promote it for six months, and then you've got to go on tour for two years. And it's just like that's a nightmare. You're sick of the record by the time yeah. by the time it's out. I'm, I prefer to see myself as a producer. So um, long run. I think I'll be doing backroom stuff for bands and that type of thing. That's where my heart Wonderful. is. I'm not someone who wants to be on stage looking like, you know, Rod Stewart, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, but um, if I had a tour van, it would be something ridiculous like a, um, a VW uh, camper van. That's nice. probably what I'd, if I could drive. I can't even drive. Can you? Yeah, I, I get the bus everywhere. Get, walk. And, and they're coming back into the conversation. They have a the Gallagher's, can they? They can't drive either. No, no, so I'm following in their footsteps quite literally. I, I, just, I just find that the bizarrest thing that people don't learn to, have not learned to drive. I really do. I struggle to... I can't get my head around it. I <laughs> love driving, apart from traffic and stuff, but, um, yeah. It's because I lived in London for about oh, know, eight years. That and um, then I, I lived in Norfolk where I lived literally a five minute walk away from a workplace at Viva making doing check production and um then I moved up here and I sort of basically retired now so um I just you know watch uh, heartbeat all day long that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> oh wonderful oh, I love it I love it man yeah I don't blame you I, I I get it because I try and do as much as I can here because yeah I like going to gigs and everything but then that's time consuming and I, do you know what I mean I'm like uh, it's okay and it's good. I'll do the odd one, but that's why I've started. That's why I've created the space I've created here. And last week we had three little wolves in here doing a, doing a set. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I've, yeah, I've sort of talking to them a few times. So that for me is I'm trying to build stuff around my time and my time frame. Do you know what I mean? So I do a lot of stuff during the day because by the, by the evening time comes, I'm I'm normally I'm normally out of it. I'm not drunk. I mean, tired. Well, um, I'm, I'm normally I'm normally drunk by then. So. Uh... <laughs> So there's the two things I'm dyslexic and make me brain your your brain in the evening. I'm just I, by about six o'clock. I've had enough. I just want to sit in the corner, well, just be quiet. Torrance, I'm a, I'm under no illusion. If you're over 23 years old, sorry kids, you're not going to get signed by a massive record label, and you're not going to go. You're not going to get anywhere in terms of the music business. You might have a fan base and all of that. So I've got no illusions. I'm not a young uh, kid anymore. Um, so. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be touring for me and my fans, which is great. But um, yeah. because it's just me on my own and I'm getting older, I can't be bothered. I don't see the point. 
really. I'd rather just sort of like have my nice little life yeah. and make music. And I um... like that. I like that. Makes a lot of sense. And and the because the thing would, would I want to do. I like to do. Uh, I do public speaking. That's why I'm dressed up today. I'm supposed to be doing a thing at school today, but uh, that's been cancelled to another. Anyway, beside the point. I think. Um, I think the job is as you get you get more mature, and what I like to do is bring other people on and bring you, the younger ones. So you're talking about artists; it's bringing producing from in the background. So my wife actually come up with one. She said you should have Doug Dougie's um, Dougie's music gym. So you know, bring people on. So I've had a I've had a couple of DJs in here who makes me lads. They've done some sets, done some testing, done their. Do you know what I mean? Got into the vibe and then got off and done some great stuff, which which I like. I I like I do like being in front of the camera and I do like doing the interviews. I do I like doing this sort of stuff, um, but I also like being behind and coming up with the ideas and helping people move on. So I think that's I think that's probably what you what you're going to end up doing. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm doing a PR thing for Joe Adama, so I'm, apparently I'm good at. Um... I'm good at oh, Adamar, sorry, Joe. Um, so I'll, I'll be doing like the promotion for his records. And I I really like the, because I've had this other thing with streaming Deezer, them not paying artists. I think I'll end up in possibly band management when I've got a, you know, I'm 16, I've got a beer gut. So um, that's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, you know, or, or production, I'd really like to get in a recording studio and produce other bands. But um, I think what I've got to do is just keep on, when I get my new computer, keep on making records and trying to get a name. And um, I, I don't want to be producing indie artists that are on the Twitter scene. I would like to try and, you know, nudge my way into sort of like mid tier to upper tier people. If I could ever do that, mm. start the start a little bit further up the, the ladder if I can. Um, but you know, these are all dreams, aren't they? Until, until they happen. But um, Alan McGee or whoever you are, you know, if you're, you know, if you want to, if you're looking for someone to produce you some records, I'll probably do a better job than whoever you got. So <laughs> I like it. Why not? Go for it. Tell you what to do. Get hold of Elon Musk's missus and get get a, get a grip of her. She'd be sound uh, of the mute from a music part of you. Was it, it reach reach for the stars and touch the sky? So you might as well have, you might as well have some big dreams. Yeah, seriously, mate. That's what today's talk was going to be about. Was about <laughs> uh, vision boards, and you've got to aim high, mate. Rid ridiculous things because guess what? If you aim up there and you end up coming here, you're all right. If you aim up dead low, where are you going to go? You're going to go lower, aren't you? So um, we'll have another track in a minute. I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Sometimes we get questions. On it. Oh, hang on a minute. I don't want to listen to myself. We'll, we'll check that out in a minute, see if there's any comments on there. If anyone's got any questions, please ask. Oh, Dan always asks the same question as well. This is how, he's, this is how the presenter's mind works. <laughs> he, say, he always says, king-size pot noodles, should they come with a king-size sachet, sachet of sauce? Because they don't. They come with a regular size. And I have no idea because I don't eat them. I think they're crap. Oh, there you go. But uh, that's his question. I'll... I've not had a pot noodle since I was at university, which is like decades ago. Well, Blair was like in power when I was at uni, which is um, going back. Um, I guess so. I, my my main gripe with a pot noodle is that the, the Bombay bad boy wasn't spicy enough. That was that was my main gripe because mm -hmm. I'm sort of like hottest curry on the menu type person. So uh, it was like eating Weetabix, you know. It was, yeah, no I'm, spice to it. I know what you mean. I'm, I was at my friend's house the other day, and he went, "Oh, uh, me, me, me mate's uh, wife. She's a really good cook. She's made this chutney, basically chili chutney. Um, it, it's quite hot. It's quite warm. Oh yeah, bang some on the burger. But it was just looked like pure mashed up chilies. I tell you what, I, I lost the feeling in my face for about five minutes, and the sweat was bumping off me. So, but I do like I do like chilies, but that was hot. Oh, so I normally try. Like, I've only had two of them, but if you, if you can find them, the curries that make you feel like you need to go A and E, <laughs> they're, they're, they're the ones you need to be aiming for. Well, I used to grow chilies uh, many moons ago. I used to grow six types of chilies and sell them. I used to sell them on eBay uh, back in the day when the Dorset Nagic first came out. I managed to get my hands on some seeds. And uh, that was interesting, giving people them to try. Yeah, would you like some? Oh, I can eat anything. Get one of these down here. Yeah, as they're coughing the guts up in the corner and drinking a gallon of milk because they are hot. They were the hottest at the time. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good though. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> pretty tolerant of it. They've got that. They've got that. Uh, that YouTube channel where they interview stars, but they're eating progressively more spicy food. <laughs> um, I'd, be, I'd be really good on that. 
I'm not maybe sure so we should set up. It'd be brilliant. <laughs> See if you can sing after this, people. Right, we're going to have this other track because Janice, I had some tracks lined, lined up and our street team, Janice, went, here's your list. So she tells me, I have to, you know what I mean? I have to take notes of it. The next one she's got is uh, The Mothership. Yeah, right. first song from the album. Yeah. It's a space theme. I'm, I'm second, the next album, when I write it, there'll be more of the space theme. So. Right. Is there any particular rationale for the space theme? Are you just a space kid? Are you just into your sci-fi? Or is there a it, reason no, for it's, that? It, it's more the imagery um, because I'm not, I'm not you know I'm not going to sing about bloody love songs because I'm not um, I'm not Leo Sayer or someone. So um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, it's just it's just the imagery. So um, I think so. there's and it's also I, I like the idea of concept albums like Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, so. Um, so I'm going to try and go down that route when I get when I get to keep on saying my new computer. Go for um, it, man. So um, yeah, it's going to revolve around so, something to do with like the the Voyager, you know, probe that went out into space and it'll end with Mate, let's, listen, a the black hole. We're going to go. We're going back to this now again. Elon Musk is SpaceX. Yeah, you. So that's mm-hmm. you're in SpaceX space album wife collaboration Bosch, boom. Into yes, space. The, it's the dream. There you go. The That's the link. That's the link. Uh, Get them both we'll tempted. Just, we'll Get them both tempted. We'll just we'll just send Elon off to, to Mars. We'll just send him in a rocket or in a car. In it, this space. It'd be up for that, but that's what you should do. We'll, we'll have to tweet Elon. Come on, Elon, you've got to get this guy. You've got to do a space album, concepts album. Right, so we're going to have this, people. We'll be right back after this. It's the mothership. Awesome. Make a bargain with you. You take me aboard your rocket ship. I'll show you the cave of gold. Liking that, man. Liking that. Someone said in the comics it'd make a great uh, liquid... Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's just stop that. It'd make a great liquid drum and bass track. Uh, Joe Adamar wants to remix that. So uh, he he might he might be thinking that. It's sort of like a... Um, sort of like a... Uh, son of uh, Fort Knox by Fort, uh, Noel Gallagher. That's mm. sort of what the song is. 
So, um, but I, it didn't. It didn't start off like that. It was just basically I wanted a um, air raid siren on the song. So um, <laughs> that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty much how it started. I spent about two years trying to make this air raid siren sound like it's part of a song. So, um, oh, yeah, just that's brilliant. That dedication <clears throat> for you. I, I, yeah, I really, I like that. I could, I could definitely see that being remixed and turned into or mixed in with something else. And uh, I might fire that over to my lad's um, DJ mate. I can see what he can do with that, which could be interesting. Um, I was going to ask you the question because of obviously. Y- you could go down the popular music, you could go down the indie route and the sounds there, but that this is a very specific... What's what's the inspiration for this? What's, what's inspired you? Where's what, in... my, what, in my sound? Yeah. Um, so, all right, well, when I got my first recording software, which was uh, about two years, three years before the first lockdown, and that's how long it took me to record the album, I basically started recording stuff and you sound exactly like who you your record collection uh, so i sounded like i don't know noel gallagher the beatles and you know uh pink floyd and of course that's not going to get you anywhere so um i just basically struggled um for two three years to get a get these songs into shape and in the end because i had such bad equipment um just doing it here in this room i had to start putting effects on right and um to cover up the mistakes of like bad audio and um it totally changed the nature of the songs and i just basically thought well i'm falling down a rabbit hole here let's go and chase it and um i've ended up with my sound of just being a bit all over the place with loads of effects and um Yes, that's basically my sound. My sound is um, on the album is covering up bad equipment. I like that. So, I like that. that, that but, um, that's you fantastic. Can't, you can't sound like your your record collection. You know, I, I, we keep on coming back to them. But Oasis sounded like their record collection. But um, yeah, it's a bit boring in it. It's a bit boring. So yeah, I, I, I was very I was very aware when I was doing the recording process that I had to discover my own sound, and it is something that a band will or an artist will come across as they get further into the the progression of making music. It's like, um, I was listening to Harry Styles' latest album. He's quite good. Mm-hmm. Um, and from his first album to his last records, which you can hear him falling into that, his own little pocket of sound. So um, yeah, it just comes with time. It's just it's just me making music. That's the sound of it. So um, yeah. there's, no, no. There's, no thought, there's no thought behind it. It's just if I find an interesting sound, I'll run with it. Yeah, so it must have been there. You know, you've got those. You're right. You've got those influences. It's like an interview. You do you're going to influence by the people that you look up to, aren't you? So you know, when you do your own things, a bit like I suppose it's a bit like me doing my shows and me interviewing. I'm influenced by loads of people who I find funny or I find entertaining. I'm not trying to emulate any of them because that's be, that'd be wrong. I think initially I probably did, but now I think you got into your own groove and you're just being yourself and you're just. So I think it make. I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you could, I suppose you could apply that to anything, really, couldn't you? You know, you'd got them. You need them influences, or you need different influences to help you find your own stuff. Well, the, the the main the main thing that made me make headway was really the realization that I don't need to perform this live. And once I was comfortable with, I'm not going to go on a stage and need to perform these tracks live. It then was like, well, anything can be put on these records. I can do whatever I want with this sound, and um, I don't have to worry about replicating it um, in that pub uh-huh. that's got about one person watching me. Yeah, got you. Got you. So um, it's just like once I've got the freedom to shove on drum machines and effects and delays, it was like, well, I'm gonna just gonna follow it, see what see where this goes. Um, and I I really love it. I really love production and mixing, and um, that's my sort of area of because um, I'm not a singer. I've got a pr- very baritone voice, so. Um, but when I'm singing on my next stuff, it'll be up here somewhere. So uh... <laughs> I'm well. Like, oh, my voice goes up when I'm doing stuff as well. But I can't. I'd love to be able to sing, but I can't sing for Toffee. But I loved. I'd love to be able to sing. But it's one of those things, and I'll just promote artists instead. I've not. I'm not trained in any way, shape, or form. Just what I know, what I like, and what sounds good, and 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 that's how it works for me. So uh, yeah, 
And there you go. Just yeah, but it's saving me money on singing lessons anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I know what you mean, mate. No, I mean, it saves me drum kit. I'm going to have to sell that I bought over here to learn to play drums and never got around to it. So I might have to get rid of that soon. That might be my next thing that I'll sell at my studio and get some space. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a drum kit up there, but I've, I've not got a house that um, I can play it in. No. Because it's uh, semi-detached. I've got no real garage or anything so um... oh bummer well i'm in the garden i'm in the cabin but i've not got enough so the amount of time i've got to do the other stuff it's like i haven't really got time to learn do you know what i mean to do that so anyway it's one of those things i just just got to make my money on cryptocurrency or something you do you do selling drugs to teenagers i've got to do one of these things that's probably the easy probably the best way that (laughs) go i'm going to gigs what for to sell so you're performing no i'm selling drugs man it's a lot of money in it there's a lot (laughs) Hey, mate, you don't have to sell balloons now. Now They go down the storm, don't you? Balloons and... Oh, I've, I've got used to helium for my singing, though. That's <laughs> a... Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think we've got we've got another track here. Is it Swami opening? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, can, I pick a, can I pick a song? Mate, it's your show. You can pick whatever you want. Right, it's uh, your, you're wish, the artist. Wish, wish You Were Dead is a better song. Oh, do you, oh uh, do you know... Do you know what? You know what you see. Wish I had wish you were dead lined up, and I swapped it for this. Yeah, and, and I, 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 I think I'm... wish you were dead is it's the first song I ever wrote. I, I had this lined up because it's got it's got a cool little video with it as well, hasn't it? Animated uh, man under the guitar looks nothing yeah. like you unless it was when you was about twelve. Well, this is when I was green, and I thought, oh, I can do animation. And then I spent like about a month banging my head up against the wall trying to make it work. So, uh, but yeah, I, on that point, I think you, should, I think artists should have a video because I, I like, to, especially now I'm live, I'm live streaming. I want to be able to go Q to VT, put a video on, and, and it does stuff. You know what I mean? And I know there's a time and effort and there's a cost to it, but at least if there's something there, it's, it can be interesting then for the viewer as well as the listener. Yeah, well, opinion. I'm going to try and make some more videos when I when I eventually do release more music. So um, definitely should, even if it's just yeah. some graphics that are on the screen. Something, there's at least something going on. I think uh, people are missing a trick with it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but this is my stab at animation, and it was that was difficult. That was really really difficult. Well, you've done it, mate. I'm, I mean, you? Yeah. Right. Let's let's uh, what. So what's this is the first track you wrote? Is there any first song? First song I ever wrote when I was sixteen, fifteen. Oh, so. Wow. Excellent. So, is there anything about it? Wish You Were Dead? Are you talking about? Is it a teacher or a, you know a family no, member? Or com- just... my songs are completely meaningless. It was like, <laughs> it was like um, I, I got a few words going, and um, it was like, okay, well, the song's sounding like it's got to go down that way. So, it just you've got to chase what the what words fit with whatever it is. So, hey, Miss, I've, Miss, I've wrote a song for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Wish you were dead. Right, should we? Yeah. <laughs> should we have that? So this is brilliant. I'm glad you. I'm glad you you chirped in because that makes sense. Anyway, Q to VT people, we'll be right back after this. Some banging animation on this as well. Watch it, people. It's quality, quality. Disney have just been on the phone. Singing your song, she turned off the 
There you go. Yeah, groovy animation. Groovy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I've got no idea how I made that song. So, um, yeah, that's that's literally years struggling over a mixing desk on that one. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I like the bit where it split into nine people and it was all flashing behind. I thought that was pretty cool. Pretty cool. But, yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? You've done it. Yeah, it's interesting. I was... I was trying to I, I try to analyze the track and what was in it, but yeah, very, 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 very out there, isn't it? You know, there's. Uh, I was trying to think of what it was reminded me of. There's a there's a couple oh, of the, elements in there. The the guitar start is um, Revolution by the Beatles slash Chuck Berry oh, with. Um, I was going to. It's got, that, it's got was, that start to it. I was going to say it's all, it's, yeah. It's just all over the place. I've put a um, sequencer on the bass. So um, definitely the a bit, is... there was definitely a Beatles feel to it when they were all a bit all psychedelic. Definitely yeah, a Beatles sh- feel to it. Shooby doo wop. Yeah, definitely. Gain, gain nicked off Revolver. Oh, Revolution, sorry, from uh, the Beatles. So. Yeah, brilliant. I've got, <clears throat> I've got a question here. It's a very important question about your uh, production and what have you. Uh, from Gom- Gomrund. It says, Gomrund, uh, yeah. yeah, do you know him? What uh, product does John use on his beard? I don't. He does, I don't. He doesn't. Um, I don't. Um, I'm. I put the moisturising cream on this bit, so I don't look like. Um, I don't look like. Uh, I've you know a cracked pavement. But um, apart from that, um, yeah, I probably should have some products. But no, I just let my beard grow. Right, beard oil so people. Just... We need a beard, beard oil, a beard, beard oil company to uh, sponsor him, so so he can yeah, buy his other computer and another mixing desk. I need, we- need Weatherspoons to sponsor me, you know. So uh, Tim Martin, if you're watching, off, you know, I'll sell you, I'll sell you beer for you. Do you go in the old spoons then, dear? Do you like spoons? Pretty well. It's the cheapest place to buy beer. I know people go, oh, he loves the Tories. It's, I don't care, mate. You can't <laughs> <see> beer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> do you know what you're right about that? And I know this is not an interview about about that, but the price, you know, if you go into one place and you can go and but some of the beers that you have on are like one pound fifty, aren't they? One ninety nine yeah. and top, you know. Then you go into another bar and it's like four or five quid. Yeah, no, I know you support your local pubs, but um, it's when you're going in. 
come on, I'm not rich, you know. Um, if I want to have a few drinks, I'm going into spoons, I'm afraid. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't um, go out. I don't go out very often, but yeah, and and you know, it's uh, it's one of those places. Isn't it? And do you know what I like about? It? I used to. Well, I used to share a house down here years ago when I first moved down into the area, and we used to nip there on a Monday night or something, and go. And people used to go, "Oh, why are you going in the library?" And because uh, there's no music, obviously, because you know that saves money. I said because there's three of us, we're just going out for a few drinks, and we're gonna we're going out for a chat. The three of us together, just going out for a chat. So we don't really want anywhere a lot of music. We just want to go in, have a few babies. Do you know what I mean? Come on, that's it. Yeah, I'd, I'd ban all kids underneath twelve though from going in there because they they're always screaming in there, and it's just like families. They should have their own separate area where all the the, the kids can go. So um, I don't have to listen to your kid playing up because. Um, you can't discipline kids anymore because they're expressing themselves. That's the, yeah, that's they, the current they, they, argument. I, yeah, a good, a good slap you can't give them. A good, I'll, I'll probably get a bit, a bit done. But yeah, you should be able to discipline them. At least get them to sit down. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I think, yeah, anyway, that's we could go on to a right rant here. But I think what you've got there, the, I think the whole eating at the table, you know, and leaving and a few manners has gone through, the, through, through gone out there. Everyone's just sat down eating, watching TV. So they just, take them into a restaurant. They don't even know what the table is, do they? they just give them half can... a pint like it's the 1950s yeah, and sit them outside. Exactly. That's what you should, yeah, you know, here's, but you might, a bottle of Coke. You might be right about that. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, an adult-friendly uh, with a spoon somewhere so the people, so the, the old drunks can go in and they just enjoy, have a good time. No kids. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be spending even more time in there, though. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Spoons, eh? Spoons. Ah, why not? Why not? Why not? Have we got any other questions? Let's see if we've got any other questions. Go rock on, on here. Uh, someone's asked here, which... I don't even know why this is a... Which was the first mic you produced? I think you're just picking random questions out here, Eddie. What's that all about? The first, <laughs> first what? mic. First mic you bought. No, uh, the first mic I had was the one that came with the Focus Right Scarlet 2i2, which is rubbish, and that's what all my albums recorded on. This is uh, the SM7B mic, which is the only mic I've actually went out and bought. And um, when I get my new computer, whenever that'll be, that'll be the one that I'm going to use on my album. And this is one that Chris James Willows recommended to me, and it's fantastic. <clears throat> it's also mm. the one that Bono that annoying bloke from Ireland and um, Michael Jackson recorded most of their vocals on. So, Excellent. Um, Who makes that then? Is that a... Uh, this is Sure, sure Mike. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I, I bought it the day... I bought it before Brexit and it turned up the day after Brexit and I had to pay tax off Thoman or whatever they're called. So um, uh, no. it costed me a lot more than what it would have done if I'd have bought it from guitar guitar or wherever you buy mics oh from nightmare country. absolute nightmare because yeah, yeah. You, you need a decent mic don't you i think people don't realize that you know you've got that, that you need that quality don't you you don't need soundproof with this so yeah. i'm i'm like in a room that you can see with like nothing on the walls and i don't really need to soundproof the the room for doing that well for doing recording mm. you know so um because everything's direct input and i don't really sing so yeah you know if i'm going to sing i would put a guitar amplifier on it or something so i, I sound weird yeah so because obviously you sang on that track that we just listened to haven't you that was you singing on that was it you wish you yeah, were dead and I'm, I'm i'm singing through a guitar amplifier right yeah to or give a, it a, a virtual guitar amplifier so give it, give it a distortion why, <clears throat> well the reason why i did that is because when i hear it i actually sing higher up in pitch whereas if i'm just singing with nothing on there for some reason i just sound like i'm doing a rubbish pavarotti impression well, so um, good old Brexit, you know, Janice has put on. Yeah, fuck Brexit. Well, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, you know, Brexit's a different debate, but I think personally, we're about fifty years away from knowing whether it's a mistake or not. Just because you can't order your underwear from Germany anymore doesn't mean you know it's a mistake. Um, and just because it's taken ninety days to get your stuff from Amsterdam, but um, we don't know. We don't. We really don't know what what uh, things are going to be like in 50 years' time. It might be the greatest decision yeah. ever made, you know. Yeah, short term. I'm, short I'm term not, I'm doesn't not, look it, does it? I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying my opinion on that that subject. I just think it's everything's too early, Yeah, you know, because we don't know. We don't no. know, do we? So I'm, I'm, I'm not Boris, thank God. Oh, my God, don't get started on that. Um, yeah, so Jan Janice has asked, uh, what she asked? Have you done any? We were talking about clubs before. Have you done any collaborations with anyone, or is it something you're thinking of? I, I've done collaborations, and I, I firstly, children, I hate collaborations. So don't ask me to collab on your songs. But I've got an, I've got a collaboration EP record coming out with Chris James Willows and Orange G soon. 
um, which was basically me bugging a load of demos over and Chris sorted them out because right. I did nothing. Um, and um, I've frequently lent guitar to some of Luca's uh, songs he's got coming out this year. But um, I hate collaborations because it's not my stuff, it's work. Yeah, I was going to say, why why don't you like it? Is, is that because is that because you've not got only sole ownership, or you're reliant on other people? Is that because yeah, it can be and, frustrating, can it? And like half the time, I don't like other people's taste in music as well. So um, you just got to work for people. And I just think, well, when I make music, it's a hobby as such, and I'm coming here to enjoy and forget everything. You know, forget about. Um, you know, PC Alventurous getting abducted by aliens and heartbeat and um, just, you know, letting go of the world and enjoying and getting lost in the music. But when you're working on someone else's rubbish song about donuts or something, you're just like, you know, and your name's attached to it yeah, as well. I get that. And it's, yeah. it's just, I, I don't enjoy it. I, I know the music industry is collab, collab, collab. You get their fan base and all that. It's, it's a load of rubbish. I can't be doing with it. So, um, yeah, I have got some collabs coming out, but I don't enjoy them. I really don't enjoy. I get, I get that. I get that because it's interesting sometimes when people do collaborate and you've got two art, even two vocal artists that come together, and you think, "Wow, that's uh, those two together are brilliant." You know what I mean? Um, but I, I get you because I, I don't. Well, I'm like some of my shows we produce them, I produce them with Janice. Janice does a lot of the other shows behind the scenes, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. I would get frustrated working with someone, I think, when you've got your own ideas. I like to be quite um, fluid and move about and do different things rather than being constricted. And you, like you say, then you're allowing someone else's time, their ideas. and, and then well, it's, it's, yeah. it's why I can't be in a band, because I'll definitely be the Paul McCartney going, this is my opinion, you've got to do this. And I'll be annoying some George Harrison in the corner. Uh, I see. I think, um, I think you're turning more into Liam the more we talk about it. I think, I think you dislike him because I think you see yourself in him. That's what I think. Uh, no, <laughs> I'd, I'd, like to go, I'd like to go for a drink with Liam. Um, so if you're listening, Mr Gallagher, I'll definitely go down the pub with you. But uh, the person, if I was going to collab, it would be Noel. Yeah. Because I and I wouldn't want to play guitar and stuff. I'd produce him because I think I could do a lot better than what he's. Well, there you go. You're putting a lot of shout outs out for for these yeah. uh, this work. So hopefully, come on. So we're gonna stop, we're... stop getting Dave Sardi to make uh, dad rock for you. You know, so um... <laughs> it works. Probably makes him a few million. So I'm gonna we're gonna do what? Where are we up to? Oh, it's, I tell you what, there's like time zoom by because we only keep these to about an hour, so they're not they don't go over too much. I've got this one. Uh, under the Stars is the next one. We've actually got a video for this one. What's this one about? Yeah. Um, I, well, originally, all right, this was supposed to be a collab. I, my mate Chambo, is, he's like a Tommy Emmanuel of the guitar, and he lives down in Norfolk, and I basically recorded the guitar part in the background over the drum beat, mm -hmm. and I brought my laptop down, and he went, oh, I haven't brought my, I haven't brought my guitar over because I had to do something for my missus, and I thought, okay, right, well, this is not going to happen. Um, so I started pulling the song around and I lifted the title from uh, a Brian Eno record, um, the Apollo Moon Landings so continues to space theme. Um, so I lifted that and that's basically what I'm saying over the top with run, uh, running on through, which is distorted. <clears throat> and the video is my best video because it's used from stock footage from the moon landings and the moon missions, which is all royalty copyright free so um right there you go keep it keep it keep it real people keep it cheap not cheap but you know what i mean why spend money when you don't have to yeah let's have this now under the stars absolutely wonderful we'll be right back after this on giant leap
liking that, man. I'm loving that. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome. It's, if you don't mind me saying, it, there's a bit of a Mike Oldfield tuba of bells going on there with the guitar, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Mike Oldfield, tuba of bells. That's the only record that does everyone's head in, isn't it? I, I don't know anyone who can sit down and listen to that all the way through. No, you can, without but you've the, got without watching The Exorcist. But, uh... but you've got to you've got to um, appreciate the marvel in that when at that time that that was brought out. The equipment he had to use to do that album was phenomenal, wasn't it? I mean, individually track yeah. recording and everything. Anyway, what I'm saying is, I, I was I was really absorbing that some amazing uh, sequencing in it. So some of the music, I love that. Yeah, love it. was, again, it's just accidents. It's just um, discovering bits in the recording program, and because I was like new to it, it was like I'll try that setting, and if it if it sounded good, then I'd run with it. This is going to be the issue that I have with my next record. Um, is that I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to be like, oh, I know where that is, and yeah. I'm just going to slap that on, and then I'll be, I won't be checking every single setting in the door, and I need to, I need to basically slap myself a bit, and I'm going to have to spend a long time over the next record making sure that I am going through checking everything, and making sure that you know I'm not missing a trick with a a certain effect, mm. because there's there's an attitude within indie music um, that you just get it done, slap it up, you know. Get no. it on a playlist. No, I like what you've done. I like you. Yeah, I, you, you can tell you've taken your time with the, with your tracks, and that it shows in it shows in the quality. Because I I could I could quite easily see that being a a, a a driving sequence in a in a movie or something. Do you know what I mean? Cut through with that playing. I think that'd be brilliant. Brilliant. Make, yeah. Make a good yeah, video. Well, of that. I've got a, I've got one track that'll sound a bit like Netflix when I release it. So some kind of Netflix series closing closing. So um, I've got the demos. I just need the Mac Studio computer. But um, my mate who works at Apple can't get me the discount yet on the Mac Studio. Or well, he can, but there's no Mac Studios in the country. So um, right, sure, because of, Bre cause, cause of Brexit. Again, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure Elon's got one you can borrow when you nip over and do your collaboration with his missus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. We're not letting you go just yet because, well, we've gone over an hour, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what we've been asking artists to do is do a, a, a drop for us so that we can play it while we're doing the show. So, basically, you introduce yourself. I'd be like, hi, this is Kurt Pickstone, and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. So, if you'd like, could you Okay. Just... And then we'll, right. we'll take it off, and then we'll put it on the station. This is uh, the John Mickey Collective, and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Wonderful. 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 Awesome, man. So if people want to get into, interact with you, where's the best place to get you? What's the best place to do? Is it Twitter? Tw or? Twitter, yeah. Uh, at John, J-O-H-N, uh, M-I-C-H-I-E, music. Yeah, because so, I struggle uh, with that. I was like, how do you say his name? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird... It's ab There's another John Mickey who's been in Cracker and um, uh, Tag It or something and been in Coronation Street. So I had to put Collective on the end of my name, otherwise I'd be coming up as him on the ah, google search listings so um got you. but i'm not oh, I, don't, I don't like my name i don't want well, the, the artist name i sort of want to shorten it or change it but i'm sort of stuck on a rut now of that's what i've got yeah. so i can't until i achieve some level of fame alan mcgee if you're listening um i won't be able to um change it yeah jmc something like that yeah there's already there's already three jmc's on Spotify. So, <laughs> no, if I start, so, if I, so if I start releasing music, I'm going to have that nightmare of it being on their artist profile and having to get it shifted over. So oh, it's, it's names. It's terrible, and because that's why I've, there's a few artists I know, and they come up with his name. I don't know whatever. I won't even mention the name because, it, and then I, I met a band and they gave what's your, what's your, what are you called whatever goes and search them and like couldn't find them. It's, I found some American rock <clears> band <throat> from the seventies, and I'm like, well, this isn't them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't find them. On the, names are impossible, but like they've all been taken. And like the one word names like blur or pulp, they're gone. Verve, uh, cast, they, they're all, every word in the dictionary is taken. Um, so then you're ending up with like um, sexy gym shorts as your band name or something. <laughs> and it's just like, it's just like, I, yeah, there's, there's nothing left. So yeah. um, I don't like donuts or something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's terrible, honestly. It's really hard work. It must be, it must so. be hard to, to pick a name. We we struggle when doing the station to pick a station name because everything we came up with had already been gone. It's like, oh my god, that's how we ended up being called Dougie Stone Radio because we already had a company, already had a, a, a presence. So 
let's use that and, and, and build on that. So, yeah, it's difficult, difficult, man. But, yeah, at least uh, people will find you once they get to know who you are and, and, and appreciate your music. I, I think it's been... It's been really uh, interesting talking to you. I love doing these. Uh, this is one of the part part of the job, if you like, that I really enjoy. I really enjoy interacting and getting to understand the artist behind the music. So what we've been doing, like yourself, is like listening to stuff and going, "Oh man, that's that's amazing." Do you think they'll come on and have a chat with us? And that's and it's interesting to get behind, you know, that 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 thing you've produced because that doesn't come through, does it? If that makes sense. Well, it's, there's even with indie artists on Twitter, there's like when they'll see a collab and they get annoyed when you say no. They assume you haven't got any, you're not busy, but it's like you, if you're making songs to like a good standard, and I'm an albums person, I'm stuck in the, the past of, you know, worshipping, you know, Dark Side of the Moon, wish, you know, wish you were here and all these records. It takes a lot of work if you're doing it on your own and you haven't got the time to, you know, muck around with collaborations and that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I I can't remember what the question was, but you know, I'm, it's it's a busy life. It is a busy life, and especially if you're man in social media as well, which I'm always on Twitter. Um, you know, yeah. you don't have a lot of time really after that, yeah. Because um, social media now is it's the only way I'm going to get a fan base because I don't tour. Yeah, do you use TikTok, Just, TikTok at all? Uh, what I don't like, I am on TikTok, but what I don't like about TikTok is the amount of women jiggling on it and how it's like the back door of the porn industry. And yeah, you know, I've got nothing against that if you want to do it, but I don't want it shoved in my face. And like, if I'm going on TikTok, I don't want to see tits jiggling every 30 seconds. The more you block, the more you get. And it's just, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to see this. So yeah, I, but you don't have to see it if you're producing content on there, do you? Anyway, whatever. Yeah. I well, I, next, next record, I'm going to try and, do it a bit more but i do find it a bit of a toilet it's a bit like you've been framed but all the people that didn't get their video accepted in the 250 quid yeah there's some you dross know, there's some dross on there and there's some really interesting people and really entertaining there's some really entertaining people on there that are good really good at what they produce but i get you you are right it is if you're of a certain age and you've got certain assets yeah you're right you can quite easily get some well, you can you quite know, easily get I, a I lot just, of views I, I just don't i'm not a sad old man or young man, I don't need to see women jiggling about. So it's like, uh, there's no way of getting that off your timeline. And that's what I hate about, that's what I hate about TikTok because I'm, I'm not interested in that. If I'm going on there, I want to see something that's funny or something that's educational, like Decap, the producer does a really good TikTok and I want to hear stuff about how he mixes records or what plugins he uses. Yeah. Um, but there's just that aspect of it I don't like and all these women that you never see men doing it. Um, you know, all these women have about 50 trillion accounts doing the same thing. And it's just like, why are you, I find it degrading. I find yeah. it objectifying women and it's not something I don't want to see, you know. Well, that wasn't the subject I was expecting to get onto yeah, today. Well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm quite opinionated about everything. Yeah. So, um, hey mate, I'm an opinion about everything as well. I don't give a rat's about it either. I have my opinion about stuff. No, I get it. You know, so do you, if, do you, if, if I wanted to see that, I'll go down string follows. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. I've got I've got the hair for it, so you know. Yeah. So do you use like Insta as well, or you? you, In, more, you... Instagram, I I have, but I don't really use it. There's two people I talk to on there that aren't on Twitter. Motorbike James, he's a very talented Canadian musician. You should check him out. And uh, Tertia, T E R T I A, I think I can't remember. But um, again, when you post something on there. You've got about fifty accounts saying promote it on, yeah, f head f head promotions or whatever. You know, it's just like there's no audience there. Yeah. So, um, but with Twitter, you can talk to people, and that's yeah, why I like, I like we, it. we like Twitter. We've really last only the last few months we 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 didn't use it as much, and then started using it, and we've steadily steadily grow that started to grow. I mean, you know, a few hundred a, a, a month we're, we're in, increasing, and you're getting genuine uh, interaction and support which we really that's why we really like it so yeah it's it's it, twitter is i agree with elon here he might be a absolute numb nut but it is the town square of the internet more so than what reddit is reddit's the back door it is it is that it's just rubbish yeah but um twitter you can actually talk to people and i i fully love that platform well and that's um, how we get all our, our guests on and we interact with everybody so it's been wonderful mate 
I'm, I'm, what we're going to do, I'm going to let, I'm going to let you get on with your day. Thank you very much for your time, your openness, your thoughts, and everything. I think you're a very, really interesting character. I think your music's uh, sublime. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you get on with your day, and I'm going to finish off, uh, play out with Granny Take Takes a Trip. Oh, that's mental that song. It's only a short. It's only a, just over a minute long. Yeah, um, it's mental. So you, you're going to get, you're going to get. Yeah, it's not what you expect. Have you heard it before? No, uh, I, no, I don't think. Well, I might, I, I flicked through a few before. Tell us a bit about it then, before we um, go. It is a noise piece. So if you want to put noise on the radio, then yeah, please, please do. But um, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. it is. It is very noisy. It's messed up. And on that note. You have a great day, mate. You keep yeah. doing what you're doing. When the son or the brother or whatever of that track uh, that you release, please let us have it because I can't wait to hear what else you produce from this album and the other stuff you've been doing. Because, yeah, but uh, I just, just need the new computer and then it's hard work. Someone there. get him a new computer, for God's sake. He keeps yeah. mentioning it. We need to get some spoons. And uh, well, I've needed a new computer since February last year. Right. But it's, it's money, isn't it? Everything's money. That's the problem. Yeah, it's not it's not cheap, mate. Not none of it's cheap. But uh, no, hopefully you get excited and we'll get you rocking. We'll get yeah, rocking. cool. All right, thank you for having me on. No problem, mate. Thank you very much. You've been an absolute star. We'll see you again, and uh, I'm sure Janice will be in touch with you. But thanks a lot for that. So I hope you enjoyed that, people. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed chatting with him. I thought he's an absolutely interesting guy. Could have spoken to him for ages. Um, but we're going to play out with this track. And don't forget. Keep it Dougie Stone Radio. Just say Alexa Open Internet Radio. Go to DougieStoneRadio.com. Press the player or download the apps. Dead easy. Uh, I do live streaming on a uh, Tuesday through to Friday. And Mr. Eddie King does the weekend. And uh, Thursdays is a good show. It is. They're all good shows. But Thursday, we do Doug's, Dougie's Atomic Dustbin. So, Q to VT. And we'll leave you with this. Absolutely wonderful, people. Wonderful. Oh, hang on, come on, Granny, take a trip. Where are you? <laughs> hey, that didn't work very well, did it? Uh, what happened to that? Let me, let me. No, no, we don't want that one either. That's not the one. Let me just bring myself back up on here and let's find this. I had it queued up and it was all going so well, wasn't it? So well. Granny, take a trip. Let's see where, why, why did that not play? Unless I had it playing in the background. I probably did while I was chatting to him. Yeah, I did. That's, that's, that's. That's the reason why. Right, we'll start that again. Imagine for a minute it never happened. That's what happens when you do a live recording. These things do happen. Anyway, till next time, this has been Dougie Stone Radio's introducing. Wonderful. <laughs> Granny takes a trip. I'll see what it means. 